All right, welcome to the first ever Waz and Ryan podcast episode. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. all yeah. this is all brand new, so uh, we'll see how we're going to do this. First of all, introduce myself. I am Matt Wozni. Probably know me from MXP TV and everything and all that. Um, with me on the other side here is Ryan Dickens. What's up, Ryan? How's it going? Doing pretty well. Good, good, good. So, yeah, we're going to do this first one here. I mean, we always want to do a podcast. We've, we've been trying, you know, we've always had the idea of it. I mean, there's always been, you know, I've always thought of doing my own and stuff. But, Ryan, yeah, I mean, you've always thought about doing one too as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to think of one and just trying to figure out what to talk about and trying to plan it out and then start talking to you about it and, like, well, let's just do it together. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, we really want to talk to walls and stuff and everything and, like, just, like, bounce off and start you know seeming insane <laughs> so we we're just like you know right. what you know you want to start when i want to start when i was like you know what let's bounce it back and forth so it's a uh, something different so and i'm not doing as much video as much as used to but you know this is kind of a good different avenue for you know for both of us to talk about whatever pretty much i mean exactly we, I, I, yeah i don't we have no direction as far as this goes but other than be relatable on a bunch of stuff i mean I mean, we'll talk about motocross as well as it could be talked about, you know, with the Outdoor Nationals going on right now. And then, yeah. you know, with – I have my bowling life that's outside of this too. We might dabble into that a little bit. Um, and then, you know, what what's coming on the MXB TV, you know, YouTube channel here as far as what's going to be coming up, things like that. And, um, you know, and I mean, what you got going on too as well. So so before, yeah. we get into, before we get into that, really, I want to kind of just – have you all you guys know what we do what our deal is what our stories are and all that stuff so um yeah ryan start us off i mean what what's so what's what's your background what's your you know what's some things you've been you've done over the years i know you've been involved in motocross before you've shot photos at you know from supercross motocross races in the past and everything but um you do much more outside that so um tell us what your background is Well, uh, right now, uh, pretty much like you said, I was involved in the dirt bike scene. I I was, I mean, I raced my whole life as a kid. Um, Got kind of out of it for a few years and had some normal type jobs and uh, kind of had a turning point. And I would sat down and thought about what I wanted to do to get back to stuff that that I enjoyed and just kept kind of coming up as like, hey, dirt bikes is my passion and and that's what I liked. And so I tried to get involved in that. So. Um, started a little brand and got, got involved in that way and then uh, came across you and started shooting some photos and doing some other things and uh, then um, kind of started up my own kind of company thing now to where I'm managing the online accounts and the, the online presence for uh, small companies that deal with power sports or any kind of thing really um, and so that's kind of where I'm at uh, right now. Uh, still doing some things with like the action sports uh, side of things, but uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Sweet, sweet. So I mean, you have a lot of action sports background as far as it goes. Is I mean, not not like it's not just mode. I remember you shot rally cross at one time and stuff. I remember you did a bunch of things right. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much. I mean, I like anything that has a motor. <laughs> so that works. Um, I've shot rally cars. I've shot. Um, I've done monster trucks. I've done dirt bikes. So um, all kinds of stuff, really. Um, it's kind of I've thought about it. And it's like I'm kind of all over the place, but it's all kind of the same thing, I think. So I like doing it. Yeah. That's I, I guess that's pretty much the the main thing is I try to do things that like just I enjoy, and so yeah, that's where it leads me all over the map. <laughs> yeah, you know, I understand that you you, you want to do something you love, but then you it kind of like it's never consistent. It always bounces you around. So, so <laughs> yeah, it's I, like I'm I, I'm kind of scatterbrained, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's if I'm, basically this is like two freelance guys kind of talking, saying, "Yeah, we agree. You know, things are crazy and things are what you know. You find what you can." So yeah, yeah. Yep. So yeah, no, I, I totally understand that, and you know, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, and with with me, I mean, I mean, I've, I mean, I've, I've. I don't say I've ran. I've it makes me TV is still going. Like it's not it's not where it used to be, right. obviously. But um, I think you know now it's 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 been different. You know, um, you know I, it was around 2016. It really changed up on me. It kind of almost ended 2015 a little bit. I went through some. I don't know if it was just burnout. You know, in a way. But I think I just mm-hmm. it just just motivation wasn't there. You know, and yeah. you know I but like I was doing it for shoot. Mimic Speed TV has been around since 2000, and I'm going to say 8 is, is that's, that's actually when it first started. But I've been involved yeah. in media stuff since 03 and stuff. And I remember when 
I mean, just bouncing, you know, with you a little bit is that, you know, we met kind of, you, I don't know if you went to me about shooting photos, or something like that. And I mean, I, I get a lot of requests for people. I want to shoot photos for the site and, and whatnot and yeah. stuff and everything. I mean, is, I guess that's how we first met, right? In a way. I, I think, yeah. Um, but actually I think the first, the first like interaction that we met and we started talking to each other was, um, I was wanting to place an ad on your website. <laughs> okay. And, Okay. I contacted you about that, and then that kind of kicked it off, and then we just kind of started talking more and more. And um, I, I had always admired your kind of your work and how you traveled and like you'd done all these things, and you were like um, very active in the um, in the amateur scene and things like that. And so I was pumped just to be involved with you and things like that. So yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's I appreciate it. It was it was I mean. It's a lot of uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into what I did for sure, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I totally get that. And but um, yeah, with MXP TV, it was it was good. It was it got better and better every year since '08. I mean, like I, I started back in '03 doing it, doing the media stuff. I, I I used to race myself. I used to race for about six years, and then uh, um, concussion after concussion really did me in. And mm-hmm. the last one I had was really bad. They said it was I heard. I mean, from what my parents tell me a lot of stuff I, I was knocked down for five six hours or some crazy number and it was wow. a, it was a, it wasn't good it wasn't good i mean to me i was like hey, i want to ride again and they're like i ah, you, you might want to think about it again i'm like okay all right whatever <laughs> and i mean i was yeah. fine i wasn't like i mean i had i cracked my sternum i was only like really like physical i don't want to say physical well only bone injury probably out of the whole thing but it was like it wasn't nothing major like it was just like a minor like crack thing but it wasn't like broken or anything obviously so it wasn't anything worse but it was it, the head injury dwarfed everything that whatever else i had so um yeah. so ever since then it's like okay but then at the time i was starting to do um motos and stuff and everything so it was um trying to do um um i was doing um photos and race reports then actually my first first race i did was a, was a race at Aco in new jersey they're not around anymore but it was a a night race at Aco or something um in april of 03 i think it was and I did like a little race report on a, um, you know, it's actually my, um, my dad's like, um, Jersey Learn business website. You know, like he was, you know, selling Jersey Learn for, you know, for racers and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have a, and I did the website and I was like, you know what? I need to, I, I did like a little race report from the race. And I was like, well, I just throw on that website. So I ended up doing that. And, and I said, just a little race report. I've always read cycle news and all these other magazines, things like that. And I was like, I'm going to do my own and just to wing it. And, and then I did that. <laughs> and then my, actually my mom went like, she read it and she was like, She's like, who wrote, who wrote this? I'm like, I did. It says by Matt Mozzie on it, and he's, you know, I was like, I was like, I wrote the whole thing. She's like, you like, that that's pretty good. I'm like, you should probably focus on that. I'm like, all right. So, Go for it. so I just went for it after that, and I think I got hooked up with Cycle News actually, the next week later or something like that. I mean, I just sent him an email saying, hey, you know, I'm doing race reports around here, I'm starting to do it. You know, you're interested in you know me contributing things like that, and it was like an instant yes, basically, even with doing one race report, just winging it. So, you know, then I ended up doing race reports for them for the next, like, lo- at local races, like District 34 up in New York and some PA, Jersey races, English Town, things like that, you know. Yeah. And then and then it, just, it really just snowballed from there. I did race reports for Cycles about two years, and then I just went back and forth with magazines and all that stuff. And then I ended up picking a video camera at 05, and the video side of it went way farther than I ever thought it would go. And, uh, you know, and you know I did work for, um, most notably, my work has been mostly probably featured with Ally Sports and, you know, at the time, they're not around anymore. But you know, they were part of NBC, NBC Sports, and right. that that yeah. was that was kind of my big, um, you know, biggest gig was probably with them for sure. Um, as far as doing, you know, videos at the Outdoor Nationals, at the Pro Motocross Race rounds throughout the summer, uh, that's always been my dream is to go to the Outdoor Nationals and do do that do that series and and all that. And I've been fortunate for in 2012 and 2015, I did every round and. Uh, t- 2012, I flew to two of them and I drove to ten of them, and then 15, I drove to all 12 of them. So I drove out the Wash wow. Eagle, did all that stuff. So it was uh, a lot of good times, a lot of good memories, all that stuff. So and then just from there, it just um, end of 15 kind of was a little bit weird because um, it didn't seem like Ally Sports was going to be around much longer. So I heard that was good. I heard like probably about a couple weeks before the last round at uh, Ironman that the show that Ally Sports was going, and I was like. You know, it was going to be dissolved in NBC Sports, and NBC Sports could take everything over. So the budget, really, that Ally Sports had was going to be absorbed to whatever NBC Sports was available to do. And 
Mm. And I think I did one race for him at Southwick in 2016. That was the only thing I did. I did a bunch of Geico pieces or something with uh, Geico Honda. And then that's really been the last national I've done as far as be at, I think, and then also cover. So it was... Um, really? That was your last one? Yeah, it's the last national I did as of right now. So, huh. and, uh, huh. you know, now when I go back to nationals now, it's like, oh, I got to pay, I got to pay, I got to pay, uh, I got to pay an entry fee. I got no entry fee. I got to pay a ticket now <laughs> and stuff and like par- yeah. park five billion miles away. And I'm like, man. Last time I parked at a national, I parked at the TV compound. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> they had a spot right there. I was like, no problem. But now it's a little different now. So, um, um, yeah, but. I never, uh, th- throughout the whole thing with like the, the, the uh, photos and, the, and like the nationals and whatnot, I, I, I never had a credential except for there was, there was one year I bought one because I knew I was going to be traveling to a whole bunch of them. And I was like, this will probably, I mean, it, it'll kind of help in the long run. And so I, I had one then. And so, um, being able to just like cruise up into the pro pits, park, hop out. I was like, this is really easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, um, I mean, that, that thing with me, I've, I've had pot, I've had, um, credentials since like my first ever one was Unadilla 2004, I think, or something. So ever since 04, I've had a credential there. I've always had a media wow. credential in some way or another. I've never had to pay, at the gate and stuff, which is, but, you know, there's a reason behind that because I'm there covering the race for the series and, you know, for the, you know, to promote the series, obviously, you know, during the day and afterwards and all that stuff, but, yeah, I mean, obviously um, not much more promotion, but coverage, <laughs> coverage equals promotion, you know, th- type of thing, so. Exactly. Um, yeah, you know, there was a, there was a purpose while I was there. It wasn't like, hey, I'm in here free. Hey, I'm, you know, go drink beer. and all. No, it wasn't like that. It was, you know, I was there doing a job and stuff, so it was different and, Right. And all that so um but it was uh, i was fortunate to 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 do that for that long and you know that w- i mean even right now like if there's only one race i want to cover right now it's um it's it's the pro motocross series right now like i would be yeah. i would just do those 12 races and call it a day i'd be good supercross is all right but i mean it's a whole different it's a whole different animal so i'd rather just yeah. do i'd rather just do outdoors because it's you kind of more freedom you have a lot more stuff going on so um, absolutely so. i mean well, f- from my end, it's like I'm, I pretty much in Supercross. I had to like figure out my own ways to get my camera inside <laughs> and, uh-huh. and things of that nature. So, um, yeah, the outdoors is just like I don't know. I love outdoors anyway because I feel like the outdoors is like that is motocross and that's like the whole that's like the whole background of the sport. And um, I just love the outdoors. I don't know why, but um, it's just. And then you like you're there taking photos and stuff like that. And like I said, um, I don't know. I always I always liked um, the, the the idea of having a credential and being being able to be on the track and whatnot. But then I also like the idea of where like not having one and having to find spots like on the outside of the track and find spots to take photos and things. Um, I don't know. I feel like it kind of helped the creative part of trying to f- find good spots. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I just like the outdoor stuff. Yeah, um, it, it's 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 like it's wide open. It's um, it's like you said, the, the tracks and stuff. It, it's a lot more kind of relaxed. That like the atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just like I, the outdoors a lot more. Yeah, no, I I completely understand that. I, even when I had a credential, I still sometimes shot behind the fence because I was like, you know what, something different, you know. And right, I, I, yeah. remember, I remember one time actually it was one shot. I think it's the last shot I've had in Racer X, like an actual photo in Racer X of mine, and. And it's what's funny is it was an iPhone photo, so it wasn't actually off a, like an actual like you know <laughs> DSLR camera. So, and it was on, it was on that the, um, whatever their features that Inside Motocross like last page feature that they have in their yeah, magazine. Yeah. So yeah, my last photo was that was a photo that got in that that page in the mag and stuff, and it was behind the fence. Pretty much, it was uh, it was actually underneath one of the scissor lifts for the uh, TV cameras on the outside mm-hmm. of the first turn at High Point, and I ended up. Um, there was um it was it was a, like a caution tape around the, the the scissor lift so you couldn't really get in front of it or underneath it obviously for safety reasons obviously mm-hmm. but um there was a uh, so he um so I ended up doing um what was it um so I ended up like sneaking with there were, there were these kids like they were within the caution tape and I kind of snuck in with them kind of just you know it's like hey to get a shot here in the first turn and, you know whatever get out of the way and all that stuff. Because um, it was like behind the fence, the the bikes are coming towards you, and then they go away from you. It's a really good fan experience type of shot. So I actually, I shot I, a picture. I shot a picture of these kids, and these kids are actually holding on the fence, and there's like three or four of them, and they're just hanging on the fence, and they're just waiting for the gate drop and stuff. And I'm like, iPhone, boom, 
got the picture. And <laughs> I, I think I posted on Instagram or something, and Davey emailed me. He's like, send me that photo. I love it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> emailed them right away, and I was like, sweet. And I was like, I want to use the mag. I'm like, all right, cool. And, you know, just let me know, when it, you know where it goes and all that stuff. And got the mag. I just want to say. The, next month or two was awesome. So it was cool to see that. I just want to say that I, I love the first turn at High Point, and I love High Point in general, but the first turn at High Point is just so cool. How they, I mean, they come up the hill and they sweep back down, and it's just like, they're just so fast, right like right, right by the fence, right where you can stand at. Um, I, I just remember going to that track with my dad whenever, whenever I was a kid, and it was just, uh, I just love High Point. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a fun track to shoot. I've had a lot of good shots there. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good track for sure. And um, I feel like High Point and, and Bud's Creek is like, that is outdoor motocross. Mm-hmm. You gotta throw like you in a deal in there, man. The, the terrain. You gotta throw you in a deal in there too, man. That's man. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You gotta throw that one well, in there. I mean, I mean, a lot of them are. I mean, you got your obviously red, but you can't forget that one. Obviously, that's that's pretty much the you know the mecca of it, pretty much. But you know, Southwick. I mean, they all have their different traits. Let's put it that way. So I think that's. What I guess it I'm is. stating from the tracks that I've gone to. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, to, cause of I, course. Because I, I haven't never. I, I did go. To Southwick, the, the 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 year they were supposed to have like the final race there, and I was like, man, I have to go there for like the final race, and so I went there, and I like <laughs> after the race I went out on the track and like I, I, I grabbed some I grabbed some sand and like a little bottle off the track. And I was like, I have to have the last sand from the last race at Southwick. <laughs> Yeah, before you know it, it was like three years later, three years later. It was like, yep. Um, <laughs> like, oh, they're back. Then they're like, back, and it's like, all right. Useless now. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, it's good to have Sam from Southwick in a way, but you know, the, the meaning of the last true. race side of it is not there anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, it's like so, I just got some dirt. Yeah, it's like hey, I, got, I got dirt in the jar. It's like, where's this from? Eh, it was some, supposed to be the last race, but they're still got one, and it's like, <laughs> it's like doesn't mean much after that. Did but. you? <laughs> did you ever go to Steel City? Yes, I did, and. Um, Oh, I went there for, oh, rather than regionals, I went there for. I remember 2008 was the first year of MXP TV, and and our f- first couple big races, our first big, our first, I don't say big races, our first races that MXP TV did was we did um, the youth regional for the east northeast mm-hmm. region at Pleasure mm-hmm. Valley. That was the first one, and the second one we did, we did the Steel City regional, which was the amateur regional, the big bikes and everything. So and we, we and I did like full coverage. I don't say we. We I mean there was a couple one or two guys that helped out, but you know I basically set all the coverage and stuff. And um, Jeff Cernick actually helped out a lot with all that, so he gets a lot of credit for helping kickstart a lot of this too as well because he helps kind of set up everything. He did some on mic stuff to help us out a little bit and and nice. all that. But um, but no, Steel City. I've been there. I was there in '08 for the regional. I, I was there for, I think for the national in '09 and definitely in 2010, 2011. I think, yeah, 2011, I think I was there for the... Yeah, 2011 was definitely there for the National, because actually, that was one of, my, one of my first races auditioning, we'll call that, for LA Sports then. So, because actually, I did a feature on nice. An, on Andrew Short and Brett Metcalf, because I think that year, Dungey won the outdoor title. Who I forgot who, I don't know, I'm not exactly <coughs> sure. Oh, it was one of them guys did. And the battle for second was really close, so I did, like, a feature on them at Steel City, because they were still around at Pala, I think, after that. So, nice. it was more like, okay, after Steel City... How's it? How did the points shape up? And they were getting closer, I guess, afterwards and stuff. So, it was just more of a, it, but it was like it was one of the first videos of different ally as far as like just just seeing what I can do and stuff, and then it just went from there. So, so yeah, yeah. been there. It, it's a right. good track. It's off. It's it's a good track. It's good spectator track for sure. You can see a lot of it, kind of from anywhere. Yeah. It's in a little valley bowl and stuff, and uh, sucks that it's gone for sure. But track, you know, it's 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 a good one. I thought that track was just gigantic. Um, I raced there well. I say I went there in a race, but I, I went there one time, and I had just gotten on my 80, and so I had some friends that were going up there, and so we, we, just, we decided to go up there with them, and I was just like, man, like at the, at the time, and like my age and whatnot, I was pretty overwhelmed by, by that, uh, that track, and it's just sheer size of it, mm-hmm. um, but it was such a fun weekend at that track, and it was just, it was so huge, and we used to go there and stuff on the nationals and whatnot, and like I'll never forget... Um, I think it was after the start. You come around and they had that kind of. There was a whoop section, but it was kind of off cambered. And um, right, right. Um, I, I, I just, I just remember um, <laughs> Travis Pastrana comes around and he's like, on, like on on the rear wheel on like this off camber whoop section, and it was just, it was the craziest thing to watch. 
Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I don't think I was there for that, but obviously I've, I've seen videos of that and stuff, so it's always been in, I think it was even Revelation 199 and all that stuff. I remember seeing that clip a lot of places, mm -hmm. so so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's... Uh, it was that same, I think it was the same weekend, the same race and whatnot, whenever he was like, he was getting ready to win something or other, I forget what it was, but like there was these three tabletops um, kind of mm -hmm. like right, right before the finish, I guess you could say. Yeah, somewhat, he was doing somewhat like, got before, yeah. Hill clickers and lazy boys over those things, and it was just it was just crazy to watch, and it was a good time. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it's uh, outdoors are good. <coughs> outdoors are a good time for sure. And uh, so, oh, and speaking of outdoors, uh, Thunder Valley was last weekend. Um, yeah, what what are your yes. thoughts? What are your thoughts after three rounds of outdoors right now? Who's looking good? I, and all that stuff. I love it right now. It's it seems just like so tight. Um, the the guys in the 450 class, I'm just super pumped to see Roxon being out front and being able to take the wins and the overalls. And um, he's just fast right now. Like he gets a good start and like he makes a move quick. And um, you know, Tomac is struggling on starts right now, but um, I think he's proven time and time again that if he's on his game and he feels good, it, it it's going to be hard to. I mean hard to catch him <laughs> and mm -hmm. hard to stay with him even. Oh, yeah. Um, the guys in the 250 class are, um, I think, seems to Rulo and Cooper uh, right now are kind of um, showing that they're going to be the top two here. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's only a couple rounds in, so it's hard to say because it's a long, it's a long series. But I feel like, um, I feel like Ferrandez will kind of find his groove here about mid-season and he'll show his, um, he'll start, you know, being up there in the challenge, but um, yeah, I think right now those two two guys are going to have a really good season. It's going to be a, I think it'll be a fight all all the way to the end. Um, at, at, at least I hope it, you know that's how it'll be. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, awesome I, right now. I yeah. love the racing. Yeah, it's it's been good. I mean, I, I watch when I can. Um, <laughs> I have my bowling tournament sometime overlap the uh, the shows, so I try mm -hmm. to you know <laughs> in between shots I try to catch up on what's going on live timing wise and stuff. But um, but no, from what I've seen for sure, and I catch up afterwards and stuff. But um, we'll get more into bowling side later. I, I got you know. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah, that's my other. I got some questions life. about that. <laughs> yeah, we got, I got there's a life about that going on. So, but no, with the um, the outdoors right now is good. I mean, like I said, Rox is doing good. Tomac's doing good. I mean, Tomac's doing kind of what we somewhat expect. I mean, he's up there, so. You know, if it's a dogfight down to the end, I mean, that's what everybody wants to see. But you know, we oh, still yeah. have we still have technically 18 races left to go, so it's still a lot of yeah. lot of a uh, lot of time. A lot to, of time. A lot of time to mess up or gain a lot of points. So it's um, you oh, know, yeah. you, you just kind of have to let it unfold and stuff. I mean, certain riders are strong at certain tracks too. I always I don't remember Tomac's always been strong at Southwick for some wild reason. He's been good at Buds too, I think too. I mean, but Roxton's good mm -hmm. as well. I mean, he, they, they've both won titles so in the 450 class outdoors. So you know. Best man I'm actually wins. pretty surprised at Cooper Webb, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm surprised I mean, at how he's doing right now. But like I said, it's so early. Like it's hard to like, it's hard to make any kind of prediction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, Webb, Webb, just in I mean, general. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. For Webb, it's like you know. He got a, he was on one super good setting, I guess, for Supercross the entire time, and then making that switch. Less, you know, we're a week, week and a half in between, in between yeah. the final round in Vegas and Hangtown and stuff. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure after Supercross when he won, I mean, I'm sure he just he decided to relax a little bit and you know deserves it obviously. And oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. and and he, you know, as he said, the progress, he didn't give a shit about it outdoors right there. You know, he was more like, you know what, I'm just gonna just you know I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this because this doesn't happen mm -hmm. often. And exactly. you know, he's it, it's that championship hangover in a way not alcohol wise but you know just 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 I mean you went through all that pressure and intensity and everything and then you go into um you know a new season right away and it's like you know i gotta do this all over again you know and it's 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 yeah. tough it's tough and, and you got guys that are kind of more you know it's not just that okay i just won a championship it's awesome but all the other guys are even more hungry because they didn't win the championship and they're the ones really really trying to keep it you know they're, they're, they're treating as oh this is a brand new championship i can you know, start over from scratch, and I've had my mistakes in Supercross, and now I can, exactly. you know, re, you know, know what they are, and now I can improve that outdoors. So, it's kind of like new blood for the guys that didn't win. So that's how exactly. I look. I look at it that way, and I think they're, um, they're, um, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be good. But I think I think Webb's just gonna. He, I mean, he's gonna get better. I mean, he's. 
it's crazy how dungy esque he is. Look, yes, he's on Rebel KTM. I get that he's in the same gear, basically, yeah. not the same gear, but I mean, he's in the same look almost, same mechanic, all that stuff. So he's in that's just put in that role, and it just seems like he's he's finishing well. I mean, he had to get well. well he's been top five most of the time. I think it was six last weekend or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. but he's right there, and it's like you know, just it's it's hopefully that oh, to it. Yeah, well, I think I think even you know? even look at the schedule for him. He's probably looking at the first three races. It's like, just get get the points, get get what I can, stuff like that. that. And then now you have a two week break. Now it's like, okay, let's reassess what happened in three weeks, and let's find the right setting that works or whatever, and get the right, right mindset going. And you know, it's almost oh, it's almost like okay, the championship kind of starts now for him. It's like okay, I need to get the seconds, I need to get the wins, I need to get this, I need to get the podiums more consistently, and and get the guys that are leading the points, get them kind of. Not say hoping for mistakes, but hopefully get in battle with them and beat them and all that. So, yeah, so. I think it's like you know, it's like um, if if you can if you can get out of California and you get over to the East Coast clean and you have like you're not like terrible in points. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like okay, like the, the season's starting to get into gear now, and um, the things like that. And like I want to say, like I guess I want to say I'm surprised, but I'm not really about how Jason Anderson is doing because he, I mean, for being out and then coming back and, like, he's just, like, right there, it's uh, it's cool to see. Yeah, I think, especially Anderson, I think he's just a wild card right now at this point. It's like you don't really know what to expect. I mean, you expect him to be up front, let's put it that way. That's expected, but, All right. you know, but you don't know if he's going to be <laughs> there the whole summer. You know, he should be, but, you know, it's there's not a lot of certainty because, you know, if you look at Webb, Webb had an awesome championship you know, season Supercross and Anderson, you know, and you see him kind of not being mediocre, but he's it's in the mix. But he's just, you know, we're not, you know, we don't see the blown away wins. And he's, you know, he's capable of doing, but you know, but now yeah. it's like now it's like Anderson's like, you know, on the opposite, but it's almost like he's in the same area a little bit, maybe a little better mm-hmm. in there, some areas and stuff. But you know, uh, but I think it's what you said earlier. It's the West Coast rounds. You know, they can kind of be, you know, however they're going to be. You know, and then a lot of these guys kind of really firm their ground much more on the east coast so i think uh yeah yeah you know, we'll see i just uh i just think that it's going to be a good year and i think there's going to be lots of races where there's going to be some really tight battles and uh i like that because i mean i like you know it's obviously cool because i mean what was it that roxon won the, the uh, he won by like 30 seconds in the first moto and mm-hmm. it's like I see that happening like every once in a while, but I think it's good to see that like everyone's gonna be tight and it's like you don't know who's gonna win every weekend and things like that. That's what I enjoy is um, yeah. I, I don't really have don't really have a favorite like a favorite guy quote unquote because I mean I just like to watch a good race and I know all the work that all those guys are doing and so um, it's you know. I just like to see a, like a solid race and there's just like a solid championship. And it's like you said earlier about, about like Cooper Webb. It's like he he had, he had an awesome Supercross season and like no one picked him to do like no one had him in his mind. And mm-hmm. then he's like, okay, I'll show you. And so he comes out and starts like getting some good finishes and then this that and the other. And then before you know it, he's in the points lead. And then you know all the rest is there. But yeah. Shoot! After the first round, Supercross, I'm thinking, "Hey, my buddy Barsh is doing pretty damn good right now." I'm like, "I, I like <laughs> yeah. his chances," and I'm like, "And then you know, it ended up being the way I was it's so been." But, for him to win that. Yeah, oh, I was I was happy too for sure. But uh, you know, it's but that that was what great about the Supercross season was like you really didn't know who's going to win week to week, and that's usually the best part. But you know, and that makes it great for the fans. You know, for the racers, yeah, they're going to have mm-hmm. their own their own issues and stuff, but they got to realize the big picture and saying. You know, it's you know. so split second though. Like I, I for, for for anybody who plays that like the MX fantasy or whatever it is, like for anybody who does that, that's, um, I give them mad props because there's no way that you could. It's it's so split second as to anything could happen. Dude, um, every every year I do that. It's the first round, maybe two rounds, and I'm like, yeah, this is stupid. I I can't do this. <laughs> like, you know, as, I don't as, even try because there's no like, there's no way. Yeah, I I rather throw names at a dartboard than anything else right now. I mean, it's like you know, it's uh, yeah, it's great the series is like that, but you know, I, it's like you know, I'm thinking all week long, stressing about what picks I have, and it's just like yeah, there is fun in that, yeah, but I'm like, I mean, I gotta do all this stuff. I gotta be practicing at the lanes and things like that. And I gotta unload this truck and stuff today. You know, I got you know, you know, my you know, from work and all that stuff. I'm like, eh, I got other stuff to think about than 
worry about what my top five is going to be, you know, and all that stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I mean, it's it's it, 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 it's good because it gets it gets fans much more close to the action as far as, as, oh, far yeah. as which I t- I mean, it's like any sport too. I mean, you see that with with you know fantasy teams all over the place and stuff, fantasy programs mm-hmm. and all that. But you know, it's it's great to see in moto. But you know, there isn't one in bowling to be honest with you. There's not a fantasy bowling um, because I think it's just so wide open because <laughs> anything yeah. can, anything can happen in that. I mean, any I mean. Uh, a guy just wanted um, the PBA playoffs finished off yesterday in um, in uh, Portland, Maine, and a guy uh, Chris Prather he ended up winning a hundred grand for you know, it's the biggest payout since in, in like eight years I think it has been for the PBA and stuff, and yeah. and not a lot of people expected him to win. I mean he's really good, but you know the number one ball in the world, Jason Belante, he got kicked out early, and you know it was like you, you don't know because. The bowling pins determine it, and it comes down to physics on that, and it's 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 hard. So it's like golf, the mm-hmm. same thing. But but um, no, but like the fancy side, it, it's it's good because it just brings fans more close to the to the sport itself, and uh, you know gets them more glued to the TV and a reason to be in front of the TV instead of just saying, oh, that's a good race. You know, more like, oh, I, I my rider's right there. Oh, I need to move up a few mm-hmm. more spots. And it's like, it's Get great them to super s- involved. Yeah, no, it's it's a great great yeah. great idea. But you know, for me, I'm like. You know, I think I think I think just because I never was never really I mean, there's the fan of me, yes, but it's fan of the sport more as far as one rider or the other. I mean, yeah, I may lean right. more toward Barsha because I've known him since he's been like on fifties and stuff and to see where he's at, it's awesome and you know, riders mm-hmm. like Nicoletti, I've seen Nick, Phil Nicoletti's another rider I've seen, you know, grow up through the ranks and stuff. Like surprise I've you know, known for, you know, fifteen years or so and see them doing very well now and and so I have those riders, obviously, but you know, as far as just, I just want to see a good race go down. I mean, it's like if, like I watch the Stanley Cup right now. I just want to see a good game go down, fights and all that stuff. Yeah, I just want to see a good game. Go down. I give a crap who wins. I don't, I'm not, a, right. I'm not biased to whoever. If, if it's Boston or St. Louis, I don't care. It's I that just want, is... I, I just want to see a really good game go down. Plus the announcer, um, Doc Emmerich, who announces this, the, the Stanley Cup. This is more of a side note for me. I he's probably one of the best announcers probably ever. I mean, if you ever hear his style, like he, he's he, really the, good. The action's <laughs> so fast, and he is just boom, 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 just, just, just nailing it every time. And I don't know how the players are, just because my knowledge of hockey is kind of, well, you know. But yeah. you know, but it's <laughs> you way. know, but I just love the, I love just love watching the games and stuff. And he's just picking out, oh, it's this guy, this guy, this guy. Oh, he's actually this, and it's like, oh, it's like it's off the pipe. I'm like, just, just, just. It's it, already. It, yeah, it's it, it's awesome. It's when already he does so it. intense. Yeah, and he's just he's just adding to it. And Doc and you know, you know, I think it was yeah. Eddie, Eddie Olchek was the other guy, and they they do a great job. And it's like that add, that adds more to it, you know. But it's like I watching outdoors. I, I, I like watching outdoors. I like watching Weej and Langston. They're they're great. I think they're awesome. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think those those two guys for for the for for the outdoor stuff is really good. Um, mm. Yep. And you know, going back to the hockey, I, I think hockey is like the only. The only sport that I can actually sit and watch and like get like pulled into, um, like that's the only sport that I can watch aside from like dirt bikes that has that kind of effect on me. Um, mm-hmm. I hate watching basketball. I hate baseball. I mean, football is is is, is okay, I guess, but yeah, hockey is like the, the only other sport. I feel like it's just so action packed. There's constantly something going on. Um, it's actually, I mean, it's very hard to follow if you're just like getting into it and you've never watched it before, and it's like. Okay, like you need to watch like three or four games to get kind of a grasp as to what's even happening, and I still don't really know, but it's just fun to watch. (laughs) And like you said, with that guy that does the announcing, he just—I think he's so good at like drawing in the crowd and like drawing in who's watching, and um, they're very good at at explaining. um, Because I mean, like I said, the action is so quick and so fast. Like they're really good at like making you feel like it's kind of slower. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, <coughs> it's more of following what's going on. It's 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 good to have. They and, see everything, you know, and so they have a like they can kind of say what's happening, it, 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 like if you don't know. So yeah. yeah, it's just cool to watch. I like hockey. Yeah, yeah. bowling is uh, it takes a different person to watch bowling for sure. <laughs> After years of watching motocross, and then you go to bowling, it's like. <laughs> it's slower. Well, it's slower. It's it's it, 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 like bowling and golf are basically parallel sports. If you can watch golf, bowling should not be that hard either. Because they're they're. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, 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 what you see on to- what you see on TV and bowling is the ex- as most exciting it's gonna be because you're bound for titles and all that stuff. It's all it's obviously, mm-hmm. you know, it's good. It's step ladder final. It's you know, that next you know, next person wins all that stuff and everything. 
you know. But you I, can you, but you, you you can actually watch like the eight games of qualifying that go in before that show or the match play rounds before that. You can actually watch that stuff live. It's like six. It's like six seven hours of just like, um, just just bo- just bowling, and it's like it's like wide angle viewing. Like it's you see scores and all that stuff. To most people, I, I'm saying most like probably ninety percent of people, that stuff is like watching paint dry. It's like it's like it's like oh my god! It's like you know it's not exciting. It's only one camera behind like a like a pair of two lanes, and it switches to another pair every now and then. And stuff they actually have it now to where they, you know, there's pa- there's cameras on each pair of lanes, and you can actually pick the camera of where your favorite bowler is at, and you can follow through and stuff now. So there's that now, nice. which, is, which is nice. It, it's a big upgrade. They did that last year in Oklahoma for a PBA Fall Swing. I was out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma for that. So you can actually you, you can actually follow me in qualifying, like and follow what pairs I was going to and stuff and. And see how bad I did. So. <laughs> so it was it was cool. Well, that's but. like I told you before. Like for whatever reason, whenever I was a kid, like I would always catch it on TV, and I would watch it, and I just never understood how they could make the ball do what it does. And I would, um, like I told you before, like you know, I, I I used to bowl and whatnot, like just just for fun and stuff. And I would basically I'm the throw it as hard as I can down, down the lane and kind of hope for the best. And it's like, I, I could watch it on TV. You're not, you're not going to get the I, best out of it when you just throw it really fast. You know that, right? So. No, no, you're, no, you're not. <laughs> but it's which fun. Is, it's which fun. Is, yeah. Which is why I'm terrible at it. So it's like, right. uh, uh, but yeah, I just used to watch it and like, it used to just like, it, it would just control me as to like how, how the ball, like how they could do those kind of things. And we were talking beforehand about like, when we were talking about doing this podcast and stuff, it was like, you were explaining like all the like the, the the grooves and the track and like the all that kind of stuff. And it's like it's 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 very scientific. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's uh, that's like there's a lot to it. That's for sure. Yeah, that's like you watch the shows right now. They have like a strike track view now. They show you actually where the ball goes on the lane, where like the you know the pattern how it looks on the lane. We're basically where the oil's on the lane. Because like I mean, I mean, yeah. What were we say? Uh, I said it was kind of like a heat map where they kind of track the ball or they kind of show where it's going to go or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. It shows kind okay. of what where, where the angle is expected to be and stuff and where they're playing at, you know, for what board. Because there's a lot of people don't know. Like, you know, there's arrows on the lanes and stuff like that. But if you look closer, there's actually individual boards. Like, there's three or nine boards that go across from from the, you know, across the lane. So that's the thing. Though. Like, the lane is like, thir- it's what, it's, uh, it's about... You think of it like the lane is like 40 inches wide, so it's like, you know, roughly 39 boards across. Each board's about an inch. And you think of it, it's 40 inches wide, but it's 60 feet long. <laughs> so you <laughs> you look at that aspect, it's kind of like, when you see when you ball in a lane, you think, oh, it's, it doesn't look that far away. It's, it's that, that optive, uh, that it's that image of it that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a little illusion, a little bit of like, oh, it's not that far. But if you ever walk on the side of a lane, you realize how long it actually is. You're like, wow, that ball, it's it, it's a long time before, you know, it's a long ways before that ball leaves the line and goes down to the pins. It's actually a long way. Like, I've actually done video on the side of the lane before, and it's like, wow, this is weird just how, like, long it is. But then you realize, like, you look from the side of how actually narrow the lane is and how the target is. And that makes it even tougher when you make the oil pattern on the lane even more tricky you know and more make it mm-hmm. more more of a can't miss situation so and it's it's there's a lot of science behind it there's the bowling ball side of it too you know which you know the bowling ball's got a you know different core in the bowling ball it could be asymmetric core which is makes the ball hook a little bit more we'll call it a little bit or it's a little more aggressive mm-hmm. whereas symmetric core it's more rounded off and it's a little bit more predictable um it's it gets to hook a lot but it's not as jumpy as an asymmetric like you think of an asymmetric core you think it's uneven so it's gonna have like one side it's gonna you know so it hits a friction it's gonna, it's gonna whip a lot more than a symmetric so oh, and yeah. then, and uh, then the, i think there's a lot to it that that like there could be whole episodes of this podcast just like trying to explain <laughs> and trying to get it through yeah what, yeah like all, like all this stuff is and that's like, not and that's not my goal for this podcast let's talk about bowling balls now we can do that another one for sure but uh it's uh <laughs> but there's it, like basically you see see the guys that ball in the lane like they, they get on tv they know what the hell they're doing it is super tough to do that and those oh, guys yeah, I mean, those, those, those i mean those i mean bowlers they go through they they lose way more than they win than they win so when they win it's a big deal for them so and it's the same as anything else like there's, True. Like, like if you follow, I mean, if you follow you, like you on social media and whatnot, and this and the other, like the, the amount of practice and the amount of time that you have to take and get it, like it's the same with anything. Like mm-hmm. if you're gonna be good, you have to practice and yeah, and you have to learn everything about it. And you know, it's the same with like whenever I was riding dirt bikes. Is like my dad was like, 
if you don't ride during the week and you don't practice, they were that they were not going to the track on the, on the week weekend and racing because he, he 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 wanted me to have seat time. He wanted me to like you know like practice certain things and mm-hmm. um, it's the same thing with anything else. Um, and, I, and I feel like the like you said, those guys that you see on on TV, they're at, at like the very top of their game and um, they make it look easy, just 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 the exact same way as the guys on on like on, 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 on the track now do. Yeah. Um, they they make it look easy, but it's I mean, like you go try and do it yourself and see how easy it is. <laughs> it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's like I mean, you you see a bowling match go on TV and it's like, oh, they only shot like one ninety and one eighty. It's like, yeah, but you got to add the oil pattern. It's different. I mean, you, you think of the oil pattern is, you think of like a golf like a like a hole in golf. You know, you have like sand traps, you have <laughs> rough areas, you have, you know, water hazards, you have all that. A uh, wheel power in a lane is, um, in bowling is similar to that. There's certain places where you can't throw the ball at because it's not going to hook back enough. It's you know you mm-hmm. can't throw it left because it won't it'll miss the head pin. You know, or you throw it right and it'll go gutter. You know, or something like that. Hook the channel, or whatever. And yeah. and it's like you, you know it, it's tough to it's. I mean, Fox right now like the well, PBA events are if they switch from ESPN, they were on the for ESPN for like 20 years, 30 years, something like that. Or you know ABC kind of on the same roof right now. Um, mm-hmm. They just switched to Fox this year. It's or you know December last year. They really they they started doing um, you know PBA events right now, and their their you know their goal is you know which they're doing a great job of is to show how hard it actually is. You know how those guys bowl on and stuff. And mm-hmm. you know I mean it's even locally around here. You know people see it on TV. They see the oil pattern. They see the strike track. They see all these things going on and stuff they see all the stats that go along with throwing a bowling ball from rpms to miles an hour and you know boards what, what boards do they cross at the arrows and at the break point based at the end of the pattern and how it hooks and stuff and you kind of see all that and and even locally like i run a um um basically a sports shot practice league in a way around here like it's um mm-hmm. basically i put pba shots out for guys to practice on and to, to give them an idea of like Okay, this is what they do on TV. This is the patterns they have on TV. Try to score what they score, and then you see them bowl like one ten and one twenty. You're like, you know, hey, that's why it's tough, <laughs> you know. So mm-hmm. them shooting one ninety, one eighty is actually not that bad, you know. And you know, if it's, it was, if it was as, if it was as easy as anyone can walk up and like throw the ball and get like a strike, then everyone would have like, there'd be a lot more pro bowlers. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, definitely. It's not the, I mean, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of that out there for sure, and there's a lot of. I mean, I mean, myself included. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to do well, obviously. I want to get to TV and all that stuff, but you know, it's gonna take a while because I mean, I'm coming from, <laughs> I come from doing video on dirt bikes, you know, at, at dirt bike <laughs> races to professional bowler. It's a little bit of a jump and. You know, yeah, I've watched a lot of the TV and stuff like that, but TV is completely different than qualifying. Like, qualifying is a whole other animal because, you know, so, some tournaments you have to, you know, to get on TV, like the World Championship, I know, for the World Series of Bowling, you have to bowl, like, um, shoot, you have to bowl, like, 50, 60 games of qualifying just to make it on a TV show. It ends up being that much. My so, arm shot. Yeah, and it's like, and it's <laughs> like, a, it's, you know, World Series, like, it's like two weeks of bowling if, if, if you do really well. And you know it's it's a lot of games and a lot of the majors like the ma- like U.S. Opens and Players Championship and all that stuff. There are forty fifty games that you have to you know go through as far as qualifying to just to make the TV show. So and so some of the guys that just get on the TV show, especially their first show. Like if I got on my first show, it's more of a relief. Like okay, I went through all those games. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> it's great, you know. Yeah. And at that point, some you know most bowlers probably you know obviously the ones that have been there and have won before, they're gonna want to win again. So there's that winning pressure, but. If it's for me, I'm just got fun. I'm gonna be like, man, I'm I'm making X amount out of this deal, and you know, prize money wise, I'm on TV first time. I don't know what to expect. That's what I'm got fun. Um, so whenever you would, whenever you were talking about golf earlier, that's one thing that blows me away about golf is like, I mean, you can finish. What was it? I saw one time. It was like a guy that got like 79th place or something like that. He won like thousands and thousands of dollars. Mm, yeah. and it's like that dude was 79th and he made like 20 grand yeah it's crazy well, there's, there's much more money in golf there just is have you, just... have you ever thought like going like I'm, I'm talking all over the place now because, I'm, because my, my, my mind's just running but um, my mind's going crazy so right. ha, um, have you uh, did you ever think about doing like where you shot like video and all that kind of stuff did you ever think about doing that with bowling or is that kind of like bowling was your escape from, from, from doing all that and you didn't want to like 
mix all that together because it would ruin bowling for you? Uh, I would say that would be something that was. I mean, I, I th- I've done video in bowling, so I've done that. I mean, just recently, yeah. I'm like I run a tournament series every every other Thursday night this summer for um, in my mm-hmm. local local center in Dover, and mm-hmm. I've been doing little highlight videos from it. And like I just did one just a couple days ago or yesterday, I think it was. So, and just kind of just doing little short highlight videos. It's something very different, but it's promotion of the league and every uh, of the tournament yeah. series I'm running and stuff. So it's as far as local lo, as far as local tournaments go, like in the like even just in this northeast area, or even down south a little bit, no one's really doing that. So they're seeing that as like, wow, this is really different. I want to try to do this, and right. they it's might get I on video. So, so so like I'm bringing that, and it's very easy for me to do it. So, but I'm also keeping track. I'm keeping track of scores and all that stuff. So it's a lot more different. But um, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is though is I mean. I mean, bowling. I really got interested in. I mean, I've always interested in bowling since I was like, I, I bowled. In, I bowled last two years of high school back in 0304 for my high school. So did you really? And I, I did that. I, I I went to some like bowling parties when I was a kid, but I always liked. It was something about the aroma being there for some reason. And this is mm-hmm. now, now this is the bowling parties. This is when smoking was allowed and you know the lanes and all that stuff. There was just something about <laughs> yeah. there was just something about the smoke and like the oil or something like that. And I was just like, man, I really like being here. It's just like this just feels like. It feels like the aroma of it feels comforting to me for some weird reason. I don't know what it is. That's just what I felt <laughs> then. It sounds weird, but that's basically what it was. And I just, I just hey, like, the, I like the, I like the smell of the oil. That's like, you know, I like the smell of the race gas from the, you know, from the factory bikes, things like that. There's, there's, there's uh, a certain, yeah. there's a certain things that like, man, I really like being here, you know, something. So it's just a, it's a certain scent or something like that can really set you off. And, <laughs> and, you know, when I did it professionally and stuff, I mean, it was, you know, when I started doing bowling professionally, it was like 2016 was my first season, my first season doing it. Um, you know, I was getting out of the moto thing a little bit, but I don't think bowling was the reason of it. I think bowling was just, just a fun thing to do on the side. And it still kind of is now. I mean, it's not really full time. I'm still doing stuff on weekends, stuff like that, but I'm still working a job during the week. So it's not like I'm, you know, bowling's my life entirely, but I love doing it. Right. So, you know, I like to make something of it down the road for sure. But, you know, right now I'm, I don't say I'm not good enough right now, yeah, but it's just, just you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, I'm four. I'm it's my fourth season pro, and it's, I've had good finishes, but it's not like you know, I'm not national level right now. I'm, I'm regional level, but not not quite national. So, but you know, yeah, I got dreams, man. I got dreams. It'll, it'll happen. So it'll all come around. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, I, I, I did same. ten games this morning. I practice every week, so I, I practice quite a bit, and so, um, but no, I, but like. yeah, but no, like I, I think with with video, it just it like video and bowling was. It was something I like to do, but I was like, man, I, I did so much video in motocross. I'm like, I'm getting, I was getting burned out pretty much. So I was yeah. like, I just had to get a break from it and I needed to do something different. And I just felt like really at the end of 2015, when I did the pre-race show for, um, for the pro motocross series after that, and then I was like going back to local races again, it kind of hit me there a little bit. Not saying I didn't want to do them, the local races, it was more like, man, it's, it's up and down and it's just, it's not consistent right now and I'm not liking it, you know, and it's just, mm-hmm. just, it's just not comforting to me right now. So, and I tried to figure ways of staying into it. Like 2016 was a really weird year. I was like doing some races. Like I think it took a whole spring off or something from races. I didn't do races for like two months. And, mm-hmm. and I was just like, man, I'm just not finding my groove right now. And, and I was like, you know what? I think this is a sign of saying, you know, not, not call it off and be done with it. It was more like, man, I, I really can't figure anything out and stuff. I, 2017, yeah. I tried doing some stuff too. And I was like, I don't want to really say, hey, let's, let's close this deal and done with it. No, it was more like, man, I, just, I think I just need a mental recharge on stuff and just really, exactly, you know, kind of go to a clean slate and stuff. So bowling was kind I of... I think you a, hit that sometime, you know? Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I get you. And it's, it's, I think the bowling really kind of, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do. It's not something I recently, but it was more like, you know, I feel like I was doing good. I, I, I was get, getting better at it. And I was like, you know what? I mean... I want to do these PBA events and give it a shot, and you know, and see yeah. what happens. And I think it's it's uh, it's going the right it's going the right way, so I can't complain. Yeah, I think you like the whole like creative block thing. I think it's just like I think everyone needs like, well, for me personally, I think it's like I need like hobbies outside of my hobbies or hobbies outside of my things to like. If I do get into like a creative block and stuff like that, I have something else to be creative. That's why we started this podcast thing was because. I like, you know, I have my thing on the side, and then I had, like, a normal job. And then now I've kind of turned that, like, my side thing, that is my main job now. Mm -hmm. And so I've been struggling a lot with trying to adjust my mindset and things like that. And um, I'll get into these, like, creative blocks sometimes. And and so, 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 like, I'll I'll go on a run or I'll go on a 
bike ride or like how, however I can to get it to like, you know, to like help my mindset come. But um, it's all a work in progress. I think it's. I mean, you never know. I mean, it's like there's things that that everyone says to like find things that that, that you like enjoy doing or like that you love doing and. Right. Um, it's like while, while I have done that, it's like it's still very possible to get blocks and to like not have anything to come to you certain days. You know, I think that that's just how it is, and I think being able to accept that and be like, okay, you know, this is just an off day. Like I'll go do something something else, and like have some other kind of an outlet um, that it just helps along the way. Yeah. No, it's it's. <coughs> yeah, I think there was definitely a creative block, but I think it was just more of like I don't I, I i don't i don't want to say i don't see a future in it it was just more like i think the way social media was kind of warping stuff up a little bit i think a little bit of that was taking a little bit of fun out of it i mean you know the the follower numbers likes all that stuff it's great and all but you know it doesn't put money in your pocket as much as as it used to right. you kind of start questioning a little bit and you're just like yeah it's like you know that that can burn you out too i know i made i made a post about that this week and stuff on facebook and stuff but it's like you know yeah my, 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 yeah, my <laughs> I, I know you saw it too so but um yeah my buddy anton tweeted that i was like i was like yeah that's one of the reasons why i'm not doing what i'm doing right now so yeah i think that's gonna be a topic all on its own because i think the same thing is like i just yeah that, that, yeah that's gonna be a whole topic all on its own about how these these accounts that take the work from the photographers and they post it as, as their own or like they crop it out to where th- th- there's no yeah I don't think that's going to be a whole new topic yeah yeah no and I, I have a buddy of mine Mike Pfizer who shoots photos and stuff he deals with it on a constant basis and mm-hmm. uh, I actually want to get him on here on this podcast eventually you know maybe the oh, next yeah. episode or something like that we'll talk about that well we can do a whole we, we can talk for hours about that so oh um, yeah that's so. like a <laughs> So I mean that's the, again that's one thing that probably takes the phone out of it too. Um, I think just I mean at the time it was weird. It was like the the uh, the, the culture may have changed a little bit. Maybe that's probably why I didn't mm-hmm. want to do it as much. I mean there was you know it was the people who I saw grew up in you know some I raced with some I you know just knew from early on and stuff. You know some mm-hmm. of them moved on and you know either got married and actually had a life going on and stuff not being at the races and all that so right, there's right. that there's you know and i'm still at the races but now like it's like you know i'm trying not not get you know get along with all the families like that like it's all it's like a new crowd every time and it's like and i'm, I'm looking around me i'm like man, this is this is all new faces i'm just not entirely too comfortable kind of in a way like it was more like mm-hmm. you know when i was when i'm starting to shoot in races and stuff and everything it was always you know it was always a you know a bunch of buddies of mine you know all over the track and you know when they race and stuff i go out there and shoot video of them and stuff and they either do well or bad whatever but you know and afterwards we you know after the race we bullshit and stuff and have, have a good time and stuff and and that wasn't really much there you know and yeah so there might have been part of that too maybe you know but um it's just things change and stuff I and mean, you know and i looked at it i think it was i think i just turned 30 and i was like 2015 yeah 2015 i turned turned 30 in december and, and i was just like okay i'm 30 i'm still working like i'm 18 at the races still <laughs> i'm like yeah. i gotta find something that's a lot more stable than this because it's i mean it was getting better and better every year but it was just the just the dips and in inconsistency with with media work in general because media changes is you know in a big way you know you can work for some work oh, for yeah. some tv station for one year and then oh no we're cutting we're cutting budget or we got bought out by somebody and stuff that's kind of like with trans world it's kind of going through right now when swap mode live right now and it's like you know mm-hmm. they they were I bought was out shocked. yeah you know they they were bought out and you know trans world just basically was left to the wayside and you know swap and anton all those guys are, and you know even mike emery and those guys they're just like what do we do now you know and it's yeah. like you know it's like, it's like i mean media changes a lot of things and it's never really consistent and that's what's it, it, it's a tough gig to live because you're living year to year basically and what's going on like even outdoors with 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 ally sports it was you know i think 2010 was my audition year then 2011 to 2012 was pretty much solid years then 2013 it got cut and cut, cut short because i think it was a red butt after red butt that year they were like okay we don't need any more videos for us this season and stuff and you know we'll call you whenever we need like, you again what? <laughs> i'm like crap i have my summer plan and stuff and now it's like okay um back to local races now again so i've been traveling <laughs> yeah traveling around and all this yeah shit. And then, so 2013 was like, I did half the year and that was it. I think 2014, I think I did no rounds at all, I think. I may have went to like one to watch or something like that, maybe. Or one to cover with, you know, with 
through the MXP TV site and stuff, like mm-hmm. Unidel or something like that, Unidel or Buzz or something. But and then, then they they call me at the end of 2014. It's like, oh, we're thinking about doing like a pre-show and stuff. You want to do this? And then 2015 happened and did the pre-show. So um, and then <laughs> and then it all went away after that. So that's the up, <laughs> that's the up and down hurdles you get with with mm-hmm. working with media companies like that. Yeah, you're kind of at their whim of like what they're gonna do and if they get bought out or get dissolved or whatever and all that and it's 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 a yeah. tough it's 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 really tough and it's the same thing with like like i was telling earlier about this like like how i handle things now with like social media and whatnot like that stuff changes so fast and mm-hmm. like yep. that's one of my like that's one of the hardest parts about the stuff that that, that that i do is trying to help companies manage their online presence and they're still like they're catching up and then they caught up and then now they're like they're hung up in the count of like how many followers they have and this that and the other and it's like well how come this place has this many followers and this that and the other and it's like that's because they bought those followers like it it helps a lot more to go look on their page and see what their interaction is and like how their engagement is and that'll tell you how many followers they actually have and um, it's a very hard process to try to explain and it's very like it's just a constantly um constantly growing expanding there's always some kind of shit happening with like facebook and all this other stuff and so um mm-hmm. I, I mean i think that's kind of why I, I like it i guess because it's not the same thing every day but then it kind of is of certain things but um there's always something to change and there's always something to like learn and there's new things to try and all that kind of stuff and um I, I don't know what happened like i don't have any type of input or any type of idea what happened with like the whole trans world thing but I was very surprised by it, and i I thought it was I thought it was great how quickly uh, Swap got it going again, mm-hmm. and like how like he jumped on like he landed on his feet and took off again, and yeah. it seems to be doing fairly well now. Yeah, um, I mean they're doing what they can and stuff, and what the situation is, you know. And I mean they're they're yeah. they're, they're, they're you know you know Don and you know and, and Mike they're they're really solid guys. They're 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 very motivated in what they do. And um, it's it's good to see that they're still around, you know, because the yeah. sport the sport does need them. I mean, there's you know you gotta have a lot of media out media places. I mean, I mean it's like, <laughs> you know, my site yeah kind of went away. Yeah, or it's uh, basically you go to the website right now. There's nothing there. There's a GoDaddy like landing page right now. There's nothing there right now. Um, but you know, like sites like me and like even Verb, or even like you know these other Verb, websites. Yeah. yeah, I mean we kind of all just went out at the same time, not just because it was. It was just like. We just, I think we just both looked back. I mean, hell, I like to have Wes on here talk about it too, to see what you know kind of went down. Even though we were competing sites, you know, we, you know, we, we were basically yeah, doing the same thing. Still, but you know, yeah. I, th- I think their situation was like, you know what, this is just not panning out. You know, it, it wasn't like how it was. Like in 08, you know, even like 07 to like 2012, it was like a prime time to kind of do what we did, and yeah. we were really, really in a good spot and you know we, we were able to do something you know between the youtube stuff and rider features and all that, you know we, we were in a good spot social media was young then and we capitalized on an early time and with that yeah. so and i think you know we just were seeing that direction going and we're like you know it just it just doesn't seem uh possible to keep it going like the way we've been going and stuff and and it just it like you know, it was less motivation, but I think it's just more of just turning over a new leaf and being like, okay, I need to do something a little different here because creatively we're getting kind of burnt out doing this. We're just we're we're putting so much energy and so much money, we're so, so much into it that we're like, what you know, and you're not getting too much back out of it. I mean, yeah, there's a likes and followers, but they don't they don't they don't go in your bank account. So right, you know, and it's the constant battle of staying ahead of the curve. And yeah, staying ahead of the yeah, <laughs> the and, and but, and how it's but I, and I think that's what made our sites was really good was because, you know, there was always the constant you know competitiveness between each other to to do better and stuff and everything to provide the best mm-hmm. coverage product whatever you want to call it you know to to our um you know our viewers and our audience so. And, 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 like, and, and I mean that, that I mean that and playground and all these other amateur sites we were just like you know we were you know there was a little bit of, of competing going on there was I mean it wasn't really talked about I guess it was more just behind the scenes type of thing of like you know we stay up late at night because oh crap I know Wes is the other play, you know Wes or Danny Stu and all those guys they're banging out these videos and getting them out that you know the next morning and stuff and I was like yeah. you know what screw sleep I'm gonna stay up the whole night and get all get, get more videos up than they do and stuff you know and absolutely put, and, 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 and you guys. Like you said, it was like kind of a prime time because like you you guys were like pumping out content at the <laughs> at the time. It was like 
Dude, I remember one year. There was always something new to watch. Like, I remember always. one year at Minio's. I don't know if it was 2014, 13, somewhere in there or something. There was the Supercross Me events going on. It was like a Wednesday or something. And it was Thanksgiving week, so Thursday was Thanksgiving. So thir- Thursday, Thanksgiving day was nothing much was going on other than the practice on the motocross track. And maybe first motos, that's about it. And I remember shooting, I mean, there's probably about like 24, 25 classes, somewhere in there. I don't know. Could be up or down from there. Uh, there, were, there were 25 or 25 main events ran that day. And so I did like 18 battle videos out of the 25 classes for those main events. That's insane. So, and what I did was I went to the hotel room right away and, you know, transferred my footage over right to the to the hard drive and just started editing away. Just started, you know, going through the videos and going through the footage and putting together. I mean, the battle videos were easy to throw together. It was just raw, raw footage as long as you piece it together and have all the graphics right. That was pretty much mm-hmm. the gist of it. But it was putting 18 of those together or whatever number it was, 16, 17, somewhere in there. And I basically was like, editing wasn't that bad. Like, like I said, it wasn't that, wasn't that hard to do. It was just the hotel Wi-Fi was never good. <laughs> it's never good right. anywhere you go. <laughs> so I'm literally living off the hotel Wi-Fi, you know, or, or, or what's the way? I'm living off of it, but I'm, that's keeping me awake because I'm making sure these videos get uploaded right. And they're going up. I think I was putting up, they might have been 720p. I think, I don't think they were full 1080 because I knew 1080 would take a little bit longer. So I think they were 720. Yeah. At, you know, I think they're up 720 right now even too. I don't think I'd be dumb enough to re-upload them now, but, um, but it's, um, you know, just to get them up a little bit quicker, but still be somewhat HD still. And they might have been 1080. I don't know. I didn't really check. I didn't really, I don't, I don't know. Maybe we'll check it one day. But they, um, but I, I remember I was all, I was up till, till the sun rose the next day. And as soon as I had all 18 videos up and, and I knew I didn't have to cover anything the next day. All I had to do was be awake for Thanksgiving really and do my motorhome hopping to every rig and, you know, pick everyone's leftovers up. So, and yeah. you know, that was my Thanksgiving for like eight years was doing that. So, but, um, it, it and, was just, uh, you know, I was, I was do that and I was just like, yep. Um, you know, I was, <laughs> it was a lot of, uh, it was staying up late and I was like, you know what, I'm going to get, you know, I woke up, I went to the track the next morning and I'm like, or the next, you know, like noon or whatever the next day. And I was like, I'm on no sleep right now. I am a zombie. I am hungry. I want some, I want some <laughs> turkey, but there's 18 videos up online. You can check out right now. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. and you know, people were like, holy crap, that's awesome. And all that, you know, there's, there was, there was some good compliments going on and stuff, but it was just, that was, that was the drive between us a little bit, you know, between sites and stuff. And it was, and I think it was better for the audience that way. And now it's like, yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. It, yeah. Go ahead. It just helps the, the end product whenever there's people, whenever there's competition, quote unquote, like whether or not you're like competing with each other or whatever, that's not the point, but like there's just, when there's content and there's stuff coming out that is enjoyable to watch, like you were doing and they were doing and you guys are shooting like the the events and whatnot, it was like you had to do that kind of stuff and you had to, um, that, that, that was just the types of sacrifices that you had to make and you know not not having any sleep this that and the other it's like that's just how it goes and i feel like that's um that's a lot of the a whole lot of the part uh, that people they don't understand entirely or that they don't think about per se but it's a lot of work that goes into putting out as mm-hmm. much content as you, you guys were putting out at the time and and, and to put it out in that kind of speed and that kind of like you know it's just that's like whenever I, <laughs> I wasn't shooting for anyone but myself, but whenever I, I, I or those races that I was, that I would shoot for you or whatever, but um, mm-hmm. I would go to the races and I would come home, like I would drive straight home, I would dump all the photos, and I would spend the whole night, probably not even going to sleep, and I would just edit everything because I I, I, I knew that you or Verb or whoever was there, they were going to have their content up within 24 to like. 48 hours somewhere around in there and I was like if Depen- I want to be depending on what it was yeah so. right and it's like if, if I want to be I mean you've even like remotely taken serious mm-hmm. like I need to like at least have my content out within the same type of time frame as those guys do mm-hmm. and so that's yep. how I always I mean tried to p- do p- it p- anyway, but... me and Verber like the Apple and Samsung of Amateur Moto if you want to look at <laughs> yeah. that one you know, yeah actually yeah I mean in a way I mean Moto Playground there too as well we'll call them like the 
Motorola part of it, you know, and stuff. They were another, yeah. they, they, they were a player too for sure and stuff, and they're still around, which is great. You know, Harold, you know, does what he does and stuff and everything, and it, he's he's obviously expanding when he's doing stuff too. But I mean, you know, I, I, the amateur scene just it's not the way it used to be. You don't really hear who's really coming up very much anymore, other than really Loretta's because right. whoever's from Racer X is, you know you know, Weege or anybody else that does it, you know, they're there at that mm-hmm. race, so they see who's the next one coming up, but they don't see who's coming up from, oh, who who won at Freestone, or who won at, um, yeah. you know, the RC Daytona race, yeah, there's there's race race guys there, so there's a little bit more of a heads up, but um, it's not as much as I think as it that was a be. great piece of the sport, that was like, that that was a great piece of the the, you know, the environment and um, the, the content that you had and things like that, I think that was a great insight into what was going on in the amateur stuff. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried, man. And, and <laughs> you, you, you were talking about earlier about the like the quality of the videos and whatnot. I don't know what quality that it is. I don't particularly care what quality it is, but at least once or twice a month, I will go on and I will watch that 125 clip of, um, that you had of Barsha, just because oh. it's the, it's, the, it's the most coolest clip. <laughs> it's like it's just the sound and him just like killing the bike. It's mm-hmm. just such a good video. Man, that was that was pre HD days too. That was that was uploaded like in oh six oh seven or something. That was a that long, was long time, ago. time ago. Yeah, that was a yeah. that was one of my. I think it was one of the first videos I ever posted on the channel. Was probably that one. So that one yeah. just that one just took off. I it's done one most viewed video right now. So it's I still watch that like at least twice a month just for fun of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, just, no, just to hear it again. No, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know it's 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 cool, and you don't see that. All, you know you don't see another Barsha one twenty five one twenty five at well, Barsha one twenty five video out there anymore. So other than that one, yeah. I think so. It's so uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was weird that day. He just showed up at you know Tomahawk and he went to qualify for school bike class up in the Northeast region, and Tomahawk had the area qualifier up there, and yeah, he smoked everybody. So obviously, but <laughs> um, um, I think that I don't know if that was no, that wasn't the year he was on the one fifty. I don't know. I think it was the year after. So. But, his and, bike just sounds so crisp in that video. Yeah, it's no, like it's, it just sounds so good, and yeah, his style and stuff is like it, it was always just so fun to watch. I mean, it still is. Like he just has such a cool style, and yeah. Put this way, he's the easiest rider to shoot. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, well, makes, yeah, him and probably, him and probably James Stewart. Probably like, like he just got just just make sure he's in frame and let him do the work. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and, just let it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, obviously you have your creative ideas and how you want to shoot something like that, but that dude's going to do, you know, those dudes do some gnarly stuff on a bike. You're just like, yep, let them do what they got to do. So let them, let yeah. them, they, they know how to put the show off button on and know what looks good and stuff and everything. And they love, you know, oh, yeah. it's fun to do. So I, I, uh, yeah, they're definitely fun to shoot and stuff. Or even like the latest videos I, I've, like I, I, I've seen my analytics and stuff like that on YouTube and seen what, what, what is still hitting still, but there's like, there are so many, um, what is it? There's some like videos from like Sleepy Hollow Two Stroke Shootout that are like do it like one or two videos that do mm. it really really well for yeah. some reason. Like like there's one I think it's got like a half no no like a few hundred thousand views or something like that from a Sleepy Hollow race Two Stroke Shootout race, and it's like <laughs> you know I don't know what what made it spark up. I don't know if it was hitting certain places, but like there's there's you know the Two Stroke videos they they get around they they do well and it's stuff. Two Strokes man. They're just the yeah. It's the backbone, you know. It's the <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear you, and yeah, and then like well, well, like even like the future of this channel, really, right now of my of the MXP TV channel, right now, like I don't plan to do local races much, if any. I mean, the only one I really think about doing is probably K Rock Kara Cyber X Champions in English Town. That's the only one I really might think about doing. I mean, I went, I, I went have to, to, go to that. that 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 was the only race I did last year. I went to to watch was that. That I went to that in Foxborough last year. That was the only races I did last year, and but I only watched. I didn't, I didn't shoot them or anything. So um, the only one I race I've interested in is K Rock because just that race. I've my first ever motor race I ever watched in person was K Rock in '97. It was something like that. It was '98 somewhere in there. So nice. that race has got some roots to it. I mean, it's a different track now and all that stuff. It's actually at the track where, well, like I said, my concussion I had that was out five six hours. It was actually on the practice track, which is where the racetrack is right now. So. I get weird vibes going there now, so it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different now, but um, outside I of that, to go there. Was, yeah. I wanted to go there. Um, yeah, I, the I I like the old track better. You know, the new track is it's it's good, but it's it's got to get worked in, I guess, as far as getting used to it. But um, you know, yeah, nothing beats the old original OG tracks, you know, obviously. But 
is what oh, yeah. is so so that's it's it's yeah. good but um well, yeah um what do you say we i mean we're going on an hour and ten here and we this is, way, this is way this is way this is way longer than we expected to be doing so i I, t- I definitely didn't expect it to go this long but it's like you get to talking and then yeah, it just happens. <laughs> no, no, it's it's good. I mean, hopefully, I'm not boring anybody by listening to this. But, if you, you know, stuck it, around this long and you're here to the end, you can comment or wherever we're gonna wherever we're gonna pop this up at. Just let us know because props yeah. props to you for hanging out for the last hour and ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a good behind the scenes look at kind of what we do and stuff. And we're gonna talk about that. Obviously, we're gonna have episodes. We're gonna talk about certain things and everything. And we're gonna dive in even like current issues with or current events of stuff that's going on you know with with either yeah. moto or i mean obviously but <laughs> i like to make a bridge between moto and bowling but it's gonna be really hard so <laughs> I, I i will throw it out there like when you ever watch pba on tv you'd be like okay this is why this is it it's more of an education thing i'm not shoving it on your throats really but it's just more of like kind of what i go through and stuff like my next tournament right. my next tournament is in yonkers new york in two weeks it's a pba event so i'll put that out there but Good um yeah, going there. I actually bowled there the last two years, and it's it's. I did okay there last year, but I'm gonna try to. Well, I mean, try to do much better this nice. year. But that's every tournament. So, but uh, but no, for um, no, for this channel, I mean, we're gonna do these podcasts. We're gonna try to do it every Monday or every Monday, Monday or Tuesday. That's the goal. That's that's at least the goal. I mean, we have things that go on and stuff. I mean, I'm off work on Mondays. I work four days a week, so um, yay me, I guess. But you know, I have my Mondays open, so. <laughs> We'll do these on Monday, and then we might post on Monday night or Tuesday morning or something, depending on how it works, Absolutely. you know. But but if we're on a race somewhere, or you're at a race or an event, I'm not gonna be in races much. But if I say I'm bowling a tournament somewhere, yeah, obviously I'm gonna be you know not here and stuff. But um, also, I like the idea. Go ahead. Of us, I like the idea of us keeping this just kind of open, you know, just like whatever's going on. We're talking bowling, we're talking moto, we're talking social, talking tech, just any kind of thing that we like to talk about and things that we think that you, you guys are wanting to hear about or could be relevant um yeah we'll be here yeah yeah like uh, if you guys got any ideas as far as things you want to talk about or come up and stuff you know throw them in the comments down underneath Absolutely. or you know on social media here on you know my instagram you know facebook or any of our pages and everything you know just just shoot us shoot us anything that you know if we're you doing have any we're, questions we're, about was anything yeah. like that <laughs> yeah, anything. I mean, any, any, you know, what we're doing right or wrong, you know, if you want to support it, whatever. And, you know, right. we're going we're gonna to do these and make the best of it and everything. And we're, um, like I said, we're, we really have no direction as far as certain things that we are interested in. That's really it. And, you know, we're, we're going to, I'm actually going to work on trying to get um, guests on and stuff. Um, we talked um, talked about maybe to get some guests on here for each episode and stuff. And, We'll get them on a phone I'm call excited. or something like that. So I think that'll be a good, yeah. a good avenue to go. And so there's that route. There's um, there's also the video route too. We might see, might get video f- featured eventually down the road or something like that. I need to get I think some. Eventually, that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to get some plastic kind surgery. And fi- I gotta fix my ugly mug here to make it look a little better. But other than that, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be good. So straighten um, it all up. I don't, I don't know how much that I can. I don't know how much that I can do on my end to to kind of fix that, but we'll. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I have the facial look for radio, so it works out good. So, <laughs> so, but uh, no. Outside of that, it'll be, um, you know, we're, we're just gonna expand what we're doing and stuff, and I think it'll be good. And like I said, if any of you guys got info or any input, let us know. And we're gonna Projects. put these, we're gonna, we're gonna put these on YouTube and stuff. Um, there'll be the iTunes, Spotify, podcast roots, you know, Google Podcasts, whatever it is. Roots will eventually add to later on. So. Um, I'm gonna do my research on that and work on that and see where we go. But this is kind of like a first run, really. And wherever you want to hear it, that's where we're gonna try to be. Yeah. And yeah. like he and, and like we just said, we are very open to ideas and questions, anything like that. We're just gonna be up front and um, we'll talk about anything. And yeah. I think this was a good first run. Didn't really. Uh, it went a lot longer than I had in, had planned in my mind or thought in my mind, but hey. Well, it's it's a thing you know we, you, we like to we, we like content. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we like talking <laughs> about what we know. You know, we're never gonna yep. talk. We're never gonna talk about sewing. We're never gonna talk about <laughs> uh, makeup tutorials. We're not gonna talk about um, 
you know, anything we don't know about. So I'm just going to say it now. I can't knit with a shit, so you won't hear that either. Good, good. I, I, <laughs> I look at a sewing machine. I'm like, yeah, someone else take care of that. <laughs> So, but no, yeah. um, but no, it'll, it'll be good. I, I think it'll be good. good. A good different avenue doesn't really, you know, um, but as, as far as the channel as well, I will still be doing videos on there, but not as obviously not, I'm not doing 20 videos from a race or anything else like that. I'm not doing much race stuff to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen recently. I think you guys have seen recently. I did a couple of videos about, I did, um, a battle video with James Stewart, Ryan Villapoto, and Dungey from Redbud 2013, I think it was, and I actually went through so the footage, and I was, I, I was like, you know what, this looks good for a video, and I put it up, and it's doing really well, um, so thank you guys for watching that, and, you know, kind of relive some stuff, actually, it kind of helped with the whole <laughs> Stewart announced retirement, not, like, not bef long before or after, and stuff like that, so it was it a was weird timing situation. Timing. <laughs> I, it was perfect timing, but very accidental, and, um... <laughs> Besides that, um, and then I did a best of like James Stewart edit of like my best James Stewart footage of the year. For the people that said it's not the all the best clips of James Stewart ever, as far as like him on one twenty five and like that, I wasn't well, really uh, I was I wasn't doing video <laughs> when he was on one twenty five. I was starting to shoot photos. I don't think I even have photos on one twenty five. So I was I was doing local races. Now. I wasn't even doing national stuff. But um, oh if, oh, I wish I did for sure. But you know, just the timing of it, I never yeah. had it. So but uh. So it's not the best of James Stewart of his entire career. It's the best of what I've been able to capture, and and um, I mean even like the crash, the crash at Thunder Valley that you know changed the series. You know that was a clip that is pretty crazy. Mm, I was able yeah. to get because TV completely missed it that day, and there's only two. Th there's only two. Well, if you want to count a fan uh, got it on on the side on the side of the fence too, maybe a little bit there, but. Um, there's my angle of it. There's the, the, my angle that's in the best of James Stewart video and. The GoPro camera on top of his helmet. That's that's, the, that's all that was seen with that. So, yeah. And I just did it as I didn't expect him to crash or anything, but it was more like, hey, just have him come in and do his, you know, do his deal and stuff, and come in the corner and set up for the shot, and then he ended up just falling right into the shot. I'm like, geez, all right. So it was uh, it was that crazy. was so crazy. Yeah, but um, so I'm but the thing is, every month I'm gonna do a best of video of a certain rider. Um, my plan is probably Fortner is my next one for this month. That nice. I'll probably do. So I have I have footage of him. Back, even I have footage of him on fifties at Loretta's. No lie. So nice. So I have some of I that. I even think I even think um, we're gonna try to um, incorporate this stuff with these videos he has. We're gonna try to um, try to talk about those videos and what we think about like just kind of looking back on it and mm -hmm. having ideas and stuff like that. I think uh, we're gonna try to try to do some stuff like that, which I'm excited about because um, I'm sure you guys know that he's got some hard drives that are chock full of good content and some good stuff from all the top guys right right now from way back in the amateur days and so I got a, I got I'm whole, excited to watch yeah I got a whole plastic tote of hard drives it's <laughs> it, believe it or not it's organized in a way but I have to still have to go through all the hard drives and kind of pick the races I remember where I'm so I'm at like I've done I actually done videos from of monster uh, for monster of him like interviews and stuff from amateur nationals and stuff like that so so I have interview stuff with him too when he was like I don't know like 14 13 things like that so um there's there's a lot there um but like i mean there's other riders i'm thinking about i mean obviously there's barsha there's a lot of these other riders too there will be one of my brother eventually but my brother's probably gonna be the hardest one to do because i have a ton of footage of him so for obvious <laughs> reasons so but that's gonna be like the holy grail of like okay how can i put you know i got footage of him from back from 05 till you know as late as last year so um okay. or even this year too i shot a little video of him on my phone this year so but um no, besides that, I think um, you know we're do uh, we're gonna do that. Um, if I see any good raw videos that maybe not be as much um, that um, that may have not been out yet, especially from the like, outdoor national rounds things like that, I'll throw them up quick like that. Like James Stewart Dungey Villapoto battle. If I see something kind of mm -hmm. similar with some riders that were pretty good that I was able to follow and get some clips of, I'll throw them up as well. Um, I put two clips up, two two really short clips up the last day or two. Um, ones with. Zach Osborne taking out Jason Anderson in 2013 High Point, so that's mm. like a quick eight second clip. So that's Tasty. up. That, that's up now. Um, they're teammates now, so hopefully they're still um, together as teammates <laughs> after they see that. Probably. <laughs> um, Tasty clips. And the next one is a uh, Tomac and a lap rider. Um, it was like a <laughs> panic rev with the biggest death stare down to the to the lap rider as far as you go past. <laughs> like it's it, and that was 2013 Redbud, I think it was so. 
Um, so there's that. And basically, uh, what we're saying is, is hold on to your hats. Yes, yeah. There's, it, there, there's, a, there's a lot coming. Yeah. So <laughs> the, 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 there'll be. I mean, there's not gonna be a ton coming out yet. It's gonna be just more spread out and not. You know, there'll st- there'll be videos out. Just you know, if you subscribe to this channel, please stay subscribed because there will still be stuff going going up and stuff. And then um, I plan to do maybe a rider feature or two, maybe add a track or two, like fresh stuff probably throughout. The throughout the summer maybe mm-hmm. or something like that so if that, like, uh, that might come or go i don't know that's up in the air right now and then also on my facebook page on mxp tv facebook page we're good i'm gonna do re-uploads of because i have none of my full videos up on facebook really everything's on youtube but i'm gonna do the, some of those up the uploads i did to youtube i'm gonna put them over to facebook right now so um starting now so you so if you go to the facebook page it's almost gonna look like new updates but it's all just older videos and stuff like that like tail two stroke stuff and 10 minutes two strokes and you know any other raw videos that are you know longer and stuff uh i'm gonna throw them on the facebook page for now on that'll be like one every like few days or something like that so the facebook page will always be active there as well but it'll be all the older content but it'll feel like hey you know hey, this is cool to see again or something so and then um and then this podcast is gonna be every week so that's that's the plan right now to kind of keep the uh mxv tv name from flatlining we'll call it i guess <laughs> And uh, we'll see where it goes. So um, it's I think it's a easy cooking plan and gets footage out there, gets some content out there, you know. And it's a different different media landscape than it was, you know, a few years ago. And we're just adjusting to it and make it work. It and is stuff. A, it is for sure a different creative outlet than I am used to, and I'm sure different creative outlet than you're used to. But I'm excited. I hope that all of you guys are excited. And yeah, but so, let's do it. Sounds good. All right, time to shut this off. I got phone calls coming in. I got people asking me what the hell's going on. <laughs> I got I got a friend of mine asking me about bowling tonight, and he's not sure. Then oh no, the planes just changed and stuff. So it's like <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on too. So but um, all right guys, thanks thanks for tuning in. I mean this went a little longer than we both expected, but um, thanks for tuning in. Yes. If, you, if if you made it this hour and something long, and um. Yeah, just just check back, and uh, if you are subscribed to the MXP TV YouTube channel right here, please subscribe to it, and um, and follow us on other podcast places where we're gonna start doing stuff there as well, and uh, and all that. So thanks guys for tuning in, um, and for and, and for Ryan being part of this. It's, it's it's cool to have you, you know, part of this deal, and and we'll see where it goes. I appreciate it. I enjoy being a part of it, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys next time. All right, sounds good. Take care, guys. See ya. Peace.